Hey, I'm Rob from JustTheRoad.com and I'm going to show you how to play Origins First Builders. This is a game for two to four players, plays in about 120 minutes and is published by Board and Dice. Aliens have landed to help develop your civilization. As the leader of a city-state, you use the alien knowledge to help you grow your population, expand your city as well as your military, and the player with the most points for doing this is the winner. So why not help expand this board game channel civilization by hitting subscribe? And if you're already here, you don't need alien technology to be able to like and leave a comment, you can use your human fingers. On to setup. Put the four types of resource tokens next to the main board along with the portal superiority tokens and the over 100-200 point tokens. Put a random bonus action tile under each encounter site at the top of the board. Place the matching colour mothership underneath, insert it into the punched hole in the board and set the value to 1 pointing at the arrow. Randomly place three zodiac cards at the top of each temple track. Add the matching zodiac token to each track. Return any unused zodiac cards and tokens to the box. Shuffle the building tiles by colour and place them face down on their matching colour hexes bottom left of the main board. Draw the top of each stack, shuffle them and place them face up in the right hand row in a random order creating the building market. Reveal the top building on each building stack. Remove two citizen dice of each colour from the game if playing with two players, one of each if playing with three, return those to the box. Put the rest next to the board. Roll one of each of the five colour citizen dice, re-rolling any sixes and place them on the citizen offer spaces. Place them from lowest to highest from left to right with ties broken by the relevant colour building lower on the building market counting as a head. For example, red and blue both roll 4. Because the red building is lower on the building market than blue, red will count as higher and will be placed to the right of the blue die. Roll white speaker dice equal to the player count. Place them on the speaker offer below the citizen offer. Return unused speaker dice to the box. Place 4, 5 or 6 district cards for 2, 3 or 4 players next to the board with 2 gold resources above each. Return the rest of the cards to the box. Add 1 tower disc of the matching colour to the tower spaces in the top left of the board. For each matching colour tower on a district card, add an extra disc. For example, these 3 cards have 2 blue, 3 orange, 2 red, 1 yellow and 1 purple. Put these in the spaces with the rest. Give each player 1 of each colour tower disc and return the rest to the box. Also give each player population bases, Archon Mini and discs of their colour along with a player board and player aid card, Agora and Palace tile and one of each of the four resources. Add the Archon and two population bases into their slots at the top left of the player board. Put the unused population bases on each space of the population track in the middle of the player board. Players put one disc on the symbols on the bottom of each Zodiac track below zero. They also put one on zero victory points on the track. Players put the Agora tile above the palace tile next to the board, allowing room for their city to grow, and they also add a tower disc onto each coloured space of the palace. Give a random start player the bulwark marker. In turn order, place a disc on the start space of the military strength track so that the start player is on the bottom and the last player on top. Take two of each citizen dice from the supply and roll them, re-rolling any sixes until all dice of value 5 or less. In turn order, each player chooses a die and puts it in an available population base, those at the top of their player board. Then, in reverse turn order, players draft a second citizen die, putting it in the other free population base. Any undrafted dice are returned to the supply. Citizen dice in population bases are known as freemen. On to gameplay, and starting with the start player and going clockwise, players are going to take turns taking one of five actions. The first is to visit an encounter site. Put a Freeman, Archon or Speaker die you control from your player board at an encounter site under a mothership. Each can be used multiple times by all players each turn. If the die value is lower than the value on the mothership, a player must pay the difference in wisdom to meet this requirement. For example, this mothership value is 3 and the Freeman is 2, so one wisdom is paid to the supply to make up the difference. When this is paid or the value on the player's die already equals or exceeds the value on the mothership, players continue to take an action. The Archon always counts as exceeding the value. Then add 1 to the value of the encounter site by rotating the mothership. Eventually this will rotate back around from 6 to 1. Then take either of the two actions at the top of the encounter site and also take the bonus action shown on the tile if the Freeman die matches the colour of the mothership. Speaker dice have no colour and therefore never match. The Archon starts colourless but will gain the colour of their advisors. More on speaker dice and advisors shortly. Value 6 Freeman let you take both actions in any order as well as the bonus action if the die colour matches. Let's look at each of these actions. The resources let you gain resources from the supply. This symbol on the left lets you gain one of any basic resource. Stone, food and wisdom are basic resources. Gold is not a basic resource but can be used as a while to replace any of the basic resources when spending them. Resource tokens in the supply are unlimited. The arena is to move on the military track. Move that many spaces, placing the disc on top of any disc on that space you land on. 
Discs on the same space are considered to have the same strength. When passing a boundary, gain a superiority token shown with the superiority token icon on the board. If you get to the final space, gain 9 points and that player can no longer move for the rest of the game. The Axe and Sword is to attack. First, receive any bonus next to the military token. For example, for this space you gain 1 food. This space lets you change one basic resource for a gold. Gain one victory point for each disc weaker than yours, remembering those on the same space are the same strength, as well as one victory point for each boundary passed. For example, blue is ahead of two players and has passed two boundaries, so a score four points. The hammer is purchase a building. Pick a tile from the right hand column building market. Pay the wisdom cost printed next to it and also the stone cost printed on it. For example, this healer's mansion will cost two stone and two wisdom. Optionally, flip any tile in the building market over to build a farm paying zero resources. Add a tile to your city, upright against the horizontal or vertical side. The six farms here show all the valid spaces a tile can be built next to your starting Agora and Palace. Then activate the played building. For example, the healer's mansion lets you gain one victory point, plus one for each freeman you have. Farms have no colours or abilities. Then slide the tiles up in the building market. Add a tile of the colour taken from the stack to the bottom of the building market and flip over the top tile of that stack. This symbol is advanced on a temple. Pay one stone and move one disc up one zodiac track two spaces. Then gain that temple zodiac card, even if another player has it and you're lower than them on the track. Zodiac cards have abilities that can be used by the controller of that card. For example, Pisces lets you gain one gold instead of taking the printed bonus action. The multicolor die is to gain a citizen die. Select a citizen die from the citizen offer. Pay the printed wisdom cost, placing a free population base above your board. We'll talk about how to free up your population bases and how to get more of them shortly, but just know for now, if you don't have a free one available, you can't take this action. Slide the citizen dice to the left, roll one of the colour that was taken from the supplier re-rolling any sixes and add it to the end of the track. If there's ever a gap in the citizen offer and there are no dice of that colour in the supply, and but one is returned to the supply later that turn, you immediately refill the citizen offer with that die. This symbol is to pay to increase a die and or move on the military track. Pay one, two or three food and for each food spent, increase an unused freeman die by one or move on the military track space by one. Players can do either of these actions in any order. Before or after taking any of these actions, the player may take the bonus action if they played a matching colour die. Yellow is to gain any basic resource. Orange is to gain a white speaker die from those available in the speaker offer. These do not go on population bases. Remember, these can be played at an encounter site just like Freeman, but because they don't have a colour, you can never take the bonus action. Purple lets you pay one food to take the build action. Blue is to pay a stone to move one disc one space on one zodiac track, but the player does not take the zodiac card. Red is to pay one wisdom to move on the military track or attack. And that's action one, visiting an encounter site. The other four actions are much quicker to explain, and the second one is to close a district. Select an unused freeman from your play area. Remove the die from the population base and place it in the empty gap of four building tiles in a seat of power. Then check the district cards for bonuses. If the pattern of the four closed buildings matches the pattern on the district card, gain all the gold above it. You can only match one card per closed district, and district cards can be flipped and rotated to match. The grey symbol is a wild and counts for any building. Each player will gain the higher number of points the first time they score that card, then the lower amount each subsequent time. The designer has mentioned you can use anything you like to track who has scored which card, but it's generally not necessary. Next, activate all adjacent buildings that share a colour with a die in a seat of power. For example, the red die in the seat of power will activate the two adjacent red buildings. Dice here no longer count as freemen and cannot be manipulated unless something specifically says to manipulate the value of a seat of power. The third action is to build a tower level. Choose a disc from those available. Pay the cost in gold for the level the tower is currently on and place it on the palace. For example, this player's red tower is too high, so we'll need to pay two gold to add a third disc on top. The fourth action is grow population. Pay the left cost in food above the population base. Move it above the board. For example, the leftmost population base will cost two food. After unlocking all four population bases, gain the 10 points shown. And that's all four main actions. Now once per turn, a player can pay a superiority token to take an extra turn, but only once per turn. The fifth action a player could choose on their turn is pass. Flip over the player raid and drop out of the round. Take back the Archon, then one by one, take back Freeman from a counter sites, increase those of values one to five by one. Any unplayed Freeman still on the player board are not increased. If a Freeman is already value six, they become an advisor. Return the empty population base to the board. Put the die on the leftmost space on the bottom track of the player board. Remember, Archons become the colour of your advisor, so if you play an Archon to an encounter site and one of your advisors matches the colour of the bonus tile, then you could take the bonus action. For example, this player has a red and blue advisor, so the Archons will be able to activate the red and blue bonus actions. 
If there is already an advisor of that colour, instead return it to the supply and gain the point shown next to the last place advisor. For example, this player already has a red advisor, so they return the red die to the supply and gain 3 points. Once all players have passed, the round ends. Return speaker dice from encounter sites to the speaker offer. Increase use speakers by 1, but if it would go from 5 to 6, re-roll it instead. Speaker dice only go from 2 to 5, so when you can't find the 6, it will remind you to re-roll it. Unused speaker dice are kept by that player for the next round, but their values are not increased. The player furthest ahead on the military track will take the bulwark token and will be the start player for the next round. In the case of a tie, the player lower down on the pile will be counted as further ahead. Move all military discs back to the nearest boundary behind them, keeping the same order so those furthest ahead will be on the bottom of the stack. Give each zodiac card to the player highest on the track. Again, the bottom token counts as being ahead for ties. And a player must have at least moved onto the zodiac track to be able to get the card. Players flip the pass cards back over, start a new round with a new start player. But before a new round starts, you check for any end game conditions. If one is met, the game will end now. There are four end game conditions, and it's in good taste to let players around the table know when one has been met during a round. The first is if one player has moved to the top of all three zodiac tracks. The second is if there are no gold above any district cards. The third is if there are three or fewer colours of tower discs in the stock. The fourth is if you can't add a citizen die of the correct colour to the citizen offer because there are none left in the supply. But as a player could return a die to the supply because they have an advisor of that colour already on their board, it does mean that this endgame condition can reverse itself. So it's important to remember that while you check for endgame conditions during a round, the game won't end until all players have passed and a round is fully completed. At the end of the game you score, players score one victory point per gold. Those score victory points equal to the rightmost advisor. For example, if you have all five advisors, you score 15 points. Then score victory points equal to your two lowest placed discs on the Zodiac track. For example, if you're on 70 on one track and 16 on the other two, you will score 32 points. For each seat of power, score victory points for the value on the die times the height of the matching colour tower on the palace. For example, this player has a red tower that is 4 high, and a red die in the seat of power with a value of 4. 4 times 4 is 16 points. The player with the most victory points is the winner with a tiebreaker going to the player with the most buildings. And that's how you play Origins First Builders. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when a new video goes live. You can follow me on Twitter, Insta, Twitch and YouTube at Jester the Rogue and find the blog at JesterTheRogue.com. I've been Rob aka Jester the Rogue and I'll see you soon.